Hi everyone. I'm Lab Loy Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. Welcome to the course Introduction to Seismic Design of Structures. This is lecture 15-1, Accidental Eccentricity and Seismic Gap. There may be some uncertainty in the positions of mass center and rigidity center. Therefore, accidental eccentricity may not be avoidable. If the distance between two buildings is too close to each other, during earthquake, pounding may occur and then damage may be induced. Therefore, we have to assign sufficient seismic gap between two adjacent buildings. Here are some terminology. Seismic force of basement. In Chinese, 地下楼之设计地震力. Accidental eccentricity. It is assigned to take care of the uncertainty in the positions of mass center and vegetative center. In Chinese, Yi Wai Pen Xin. Mass Center in Chinese Zi Liang Zhong Xin. That's the mass centroid of a, of a story. And Vegetity Center is the stiffness center of a story. In Chinese, Gang Du Zhong Xin. Eccentricity Amplification Factor. In Chinese, Pen Xin Zi Fang Da Yin Zi. If the regularity of the structure is so poor, the eccentricity, accidental eccentricity, should be amplified by amplification factor. Allowable interstory drift ratio, in Chinese, 容许成见位移角. Allowable interstory drift ratio is assigned to avoid the damage of non-structural element under small to moderate earthquake. Seismic gap, in Chinese, 耐震间隔 is assigned to avoid the pounding of two adjacent buildings. Ultimate storage shear capacity, in Chinese, 直线成减力容量, that's the shear strength of a story, the ultimate shear strength of a story. Capacity to demand ratio of storage shear, in Chinese, 成减力容量需求比, is assigned in order to avoid soft story, weak story. Seismic force of basement. According to Seismic Design Code section 2.12, the seismic force of basement level I, FBIF, is proportional to the weight of the floor. Therefore, FBIF equal to KBIF times WBIF. WBIF is the weight of the base level I, and KBIF is the coefficient of the base level I in order to obtain the seismic force of the base level I. Therefore, KBIF is the vibration intensity coefficient of basement level I. Under design basis earthquake, the vibration intensity coefficient KBIF equal to 0.1 times 1 minus HBIF divided by 40 times SB, SDS times I. And HBIF is the elevation of base level I below the ground. And SDS is the design basis spectral acceleration for short period structure. And I is the important factor of the structure. And now from this equation we know that the higher the depth of the basement level, the lower the coefficient, the lower the seismic force. And there's a, there's a lower bound for the coefficient. And KBIF, when the HBIF, the depth of the elevation of the basement level I is larger than 20 meters. And KBIF is limited. If the lower bound for KBIF equal to 0.05 SDS times I. 
When HBIF equal to 20, 1 minus 20 divided by 40 equal to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 equal to 0.05 SDS times I. Similarly, under maximum consider earthquake, the vibration intensity coefficient KBIF equal to 0 0.1 times 1 minus HBIF divided by 40 times SMS times I. For HBIF less than or equal to 20 meters below the ground, and SMS is the maximum considered spatial acceleration for short period structure. When the depth is larger than 20 meters, the coefficient, the lower bound for the coefficient is equal to 0.05 times SMS times I. For small to moderate earthquake, the coefficient is assigned in this formula for site class 1, 2, or 3. When the depth of the basement level is less than or equal to 20 meters, KBIF equal to 0.1 times 1 minus HBIF divided by 40 times SD star S divided by 4.2 I. And SD star S is the small to moderate spatial acceleration for short period structure. If the depth of the basement level is larger than 20 meter, and KBIF, the lower bound for KBIF equal to 0 0.05 times SD star S divided by 4.2 times I, that's for site class 1, 2, or 3. For Taipei Basin, 4.2 here is, rep is replaced by 3.5. And 4.2 here is also replaced by 3.5 for Taipei Basin. Accidental eccentricity. As we know, the seismic force of a story is distributed according to the mass distribution of the story. Therefore, the resultant seismic force of a story is applied through the mass center of the story. Therefore, the mass center of the story is the point of application of the resultant seismic force of the story. And rigidity center of a story is the stiffness centroid of the story. If the mass center coincides with the rigidity center, no, caution, no torsion will occur. However, if eccentricity exists, that's the mass center does not coincide with the rigidity center, then torsion is induced. And MC is the mass center of the I story, and RC is the rigidity center of the I story. And here is the plan of a story I, and the resultant seismic force of the story is applied through the mass center. If the mass center does not coincide with the rigidity center, torsion occurs. In this case, the torsion will turn, will rotate the story floor clockwise, in the clockwise direction. And FIF is the seismic force of the ice story. Due to construction or usage of the building, the rigidity center and the mass center may not locate at the positions as designed. And in order to prevent the torsion from being underestimated, 5% accidental eccentricity is taken into consideration. Therefore, the mass center is shifted by plus 5% or minus 5% of the dimension of the floor plan in the direction perpendicular to the seismic force. And the statement is stated in Seismic Design Code section 2.14. And here's an example. This is the mass center. This is the rigidity center. Originally, the seismic force, the resultant seismic force is applied through the mass center in order to take the uncertainty of the position of the mass center or the rigidity center into consideration. Therefore, the resultant seismic force is shifted by, in this case, positive 
of the dimension in the perpendicular to the perpendicular to the seismic force. That is dy. Therefore, story seismic force FYF is stripped by, in this case, 0.05 dy. dy is the dimension of the floor in the direction perpendicular to the seismic force. And dy is the dimension of the floor plan, in this case, in y direction. If the building is so irregular, the, the accidental eccentricity may be amplified by AIF. And AIF equal to delta maximum divided by 1.2 delta average square. And delta at maximum is the maximum of the corner displacement of the I story under seismic force with 5% plus 5% eccentricity. And delta average is the average displacement of all the corners of the ice floor under seismic force with plus 5% eccentricity. And after amplification, the eccentricity, the eccentricity equal to AIF times 5%. Therefore, the minimum AIF, the minimum eccentricity equal to 5%, and the maximum eccentricity equal to 15%. If there's no eccentricity, therefore under seismic force there's no there's no torsion, delta maximum may be very close to delta average. Therefore AIF is less than one, but we have the minimum value for AIF. Therefore the accidental eccentricity we just we can just use five percent. If the building is so irregular Delta maximum may be very different from delta average, or delta maximum is much larger than delta average, then AIF may become larger. And there's a maximum value, maximum bound, the upper bound for AIF equal to 3. Therefore, the higher the irregularity of the story, the bigger the difference between maximum displacement, delta maximum, and average displacement, delta average so that the larger the amplification factor AIF. And for a story, all, fake, all four cases have to, to be considered. They are seismic force in X direction with plus 5% eccentricity, seismic force in X direction with minus 5% eccentricity, and seismic force in Y direction with plus or minus 5% eccentricity. That's all. Therefore, for a single story, there will be four cases. Four AIF have to be considered. Allowable interstory drift ratio. According to Seismic Design Code section 2.16.1, under small to moderate seismic force, the interstory drift ratio does not exceed 0.005. That's 0.5 percent. In order to avoid the damage to the non-structural element, and small to moderate seismic force V star equal to I times F U D star divided by 4.2 alpha Y times S A D star divided by F U D star multiplication times W, and W is the weight of the structure, I is the importance factor of the structure, and at SAD star is the small to moderate special acceleration of the structure. And FUD star is the reduction factor for the small to moderate seismic force. And this small to moderate seismic force is applied to site class 1, 2, or 3, and also Taipei Basin. And interstory drift ratio is defined as RIF equal to delta I plus 1F minus delta IF divided by HIF. The numerator here is the displacement of the floor above, the relative displacement of the floor above relative, relative to the current floor. Therefore, this is the relative displacement between two adjacent floors and divided by the height of the floor. 
Therefore, delta I F is the displacement of the I story, and extra I F is the height, the clear height of the I story. And for the small to moderate seismic force, no near force effect is considered. So that Na equal to Nv equal to 1.0. And no upper bound for the fundamental vibration period. We can just use T equal to the T dynamic. And T dynamic is the vibration period, the fundamental vibration period from dynamic analysis. Therefore, there will be no upper bound 1.4 T code. You don't, we don't have to use the vibration period from the seismic design code as the upper bound for the vibration period for the design of the structures. And lower bound for spectral acceleration. Originally, when T is larger than 2.5 T0 D star, SAD equal to 0.4 SD star S. But for small to moderate seismic force, in order to check the allowable interstory drift ratio, no lower bound, no lower bound for the spectral acceleration. Therefore, when T, the fundamental vibration period, is larger than the corner period, T0 D star, SAD equal to SD star 1 divided by T. Therefore, the spectral acceleration keep decreasing with the structural vibration period T. And the structural, the spectral acceleration is inversely proportional to the fundamental vibration period T. And one more point is that the importance factor is not, have not to be considered. Therefore, I equal to 1.0. Seismic gap. If two buildings are too close to each other under earthquakes, the two pounding may occur, and then in damage may be induced. Therefore, if the spacing between two adjacent buildings is not enough, pounding may occur during the earthquake, and damage may be induced. Therefore, the spacing between two adjacent buildings has to be specified in order to prevent such damage. Therefore, space has to be left between the site boundary and the building corners or edges in order to prevent pounding of two adjacent buildings. And this is the curve specify the relationship between seismic force and the displacement of the structure. And V here equal to I divided by 1.4 alpha Y times SAD divided by FUM modification times W. The design basis seismic force has been reduced by 1.4 due to redundance of the structure, by alpha y due to the first yielding amplification factor, by fu due to the ductility of the structures. Therefore, we here, the design seismic force, design basis seismic force is elastic force, but actually under seismic force, here is the relationship between the seismic force and the displacement of the structure under earthquake. Therefore, this under earthquake, the displacement is actually delta A rather than delta 475 because the seismic force, the design basis seismic force has been reduced due to ductility, due to amplification factor, due to seismic reduction factor Fu. Therefore, delta 475 is the displacement under design basis seismic force. And delta Y star is the displacement at first yielding. Therefore, delta Y star equal to alpha Y times delta 475. And the displacement at yielding, delta Y equal to 1.4 alpha Y times delta 475. And do and the displacement at allowable ductility capacity, delta A, equal to 1.4 times alpha Y times RA times delta 475. Therefore, we have to lift the space, delta A, between the site boundary 
and the building corner. However, the probability of two buildings having maximum displacement at the same time and moving out of phase and toward each other is very small. It's small. Therefore, the seismic gap accommodating maximum displacement is reduced to 60%. Therefore, delta G equal to 0 0.6 times 1.4 times alpha Y times RA times delta 475. If we have two buildings, two adjacent buildings, B1 and B2, for building B1, the space between the site boundary and the building corner or edges equal to 0 0.6 times 1.4 times alpha y b1 times ra b1 times delta 475 b1 that's the space the distance of the building away from the site boundary for building b2 it also leaves some space between the site boundary on and the building b2 equal to 0 0.4 times 1.5 times alpha y b2 times ra b2 times delta 475 B2. Therefore, the minimum distance between two adjacent buildings, delta G B1 B2, equal to 0 0.6, 1.4, times alpha Y B1, times RA B1, times delta 475 B1, plus alpha Y B2, times alpha RA B2, times delta 475 B2. That's the minimum distance should be assigned between two adjacent buildings. B1 and B2. And then we move to ultimate storage shear capacity in order to avoid weak storage. According to Seismic Design Code Section 2.17, in order to avoid weak storage, the capacity to demand ratio of storage shear must be at least 80% of the story above. Therefore, VIF C divided by VIFD have to be larger than or equal to 0 0.8 VI1 plus 1FC divided by VI plus 1FD. From the left hand side of the inequality, this is the capacity demand ratio, capacity to demand ratio of the storage shear of the I floor should be larger than 0 0.8 of the capacity to demand ratio of the story above I plus one floor. Therefore, VIFC is the shear capacity of the I story. VIFD is the shear demand, demand here, of the I story. And there's some exception here. Is the structure remains elastic under maximum considered airscape. Therefore, under V equal to, under the seismic force, V equal to FUM divided by S times SAM divided by FUM modification, I times W. Therefore, no reduction due to ductility, no reduction due to reductance, no reductance due to first yielding amplification factor. Under this force, and the structure remains elastic. And the risk story check can be skipped. Therefore, risk story check is allowed not to be certified if the structure remains elastic under maximum considered earthquake. If the wall cross-section area of a story is less than 80% of the story above, there's AWIF. AWIF is the total cross-sectional area of the walls of the ice floor is less than 80% of that of the floor of the story above. Then, in this situation, the strength of walls have to be considered according to Seismic Design Code Section 2.17. And here's the reference for, the, for this lecture, Seismic Design Code of Buildings published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. You can download the seismic design code from this website free of charge. And here's the video for lecture one in both English and Chinese version. Lecture two, lecture three, lecture four, lecture five, 
six, seven, letter eight, nine, letter ten, letter eleven, letter twelve, letter thirteen, letter fourteen, letter fifteen. This one is the current one. It's under preparation, and it will be uploaded to YouTube later. And in this course, we have considered the seismic force of the basement below the ground, and we have also considered accidental eccentricity due to uncertainty in identifying the position of the mass center and the vegetative center. And in order to avoid any damage to the to the non-structural element under small to moderate under small to moderate earthquake, allowable interstory drift ratio is assigned. Therefore, under small to moderate earthquake, the interstory drift is limited to 0.5 percent. Interstory drift ratio is limited to 0.5 percent. And in order to avoid the pounding of two adjacent buildings during earthquake, therefore seismic gap has to be as have to be specified so that we have enough distance between two adjacent buildings in order to avoid pounding during earthquake. And then in order to to avoid having having a、uh, weak story, the capacity to demand ratio of story shear is assigned. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.